Hello everyone, this video will talk about the central dogma used in molecular biology, specifically the process of replication. Central dogma refers to the pathway for the flow of genetic information. Here, the arrows indicate the directions proposed for this transfer of genetic information. The bubbles encircling DNA signifies that DNA is a template for its self-replication. The arrow between the DNA and the RNA indicates the RNA synthesis in the process of transcription is directed by the DNA. Correspondingly, the synthesis of the proteins or translation is directed by the RNA template. Before we discuss the process of replication, let's first talk about the structure of the DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, which is a polymer. A polymer is a long chain-like molecule made up of subunits called monomers. In DNA, the monomers are called nucleotides, and these are linked together to form a polynucleotide chain that can be hundreds, thousands, or even millions of nucleotides in length. The basic unit of the DNA molecule is the nucleotide. Nucleotides are found in the cell either as components of nucleic acids or as individual molecules. The nucleotide is itself quite a complex molecule, being made up of three distinct components. These are the sugar, a nitrogenous base, and a phosphate group. The sugar component of the nucleotide is a pentose. The particular type of pentose present in the nucleotides found in DNA is called 2-deoxyribose. Pentose sugars can exist in two forms, the straight chain or the Fischer structure, and the ring or Haworth structure. This is a structure found in a DNA nucleotide. A pentose sugar contains five carbon atoms. The carbon atoms are always numbered in the same way. They are not just called 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, but they are numbered as 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime, and 5 prime. 1 prime always occurs after the oxygen, and 5 prime is located after or outside the ring form. The second component of a nucleotide is a nitrogenous base. This is a single or a double ring structure attached to the one prime carbon of the sugar. The nitrogen base is attached to the sugar by a glycosidic bond. A molecule composed of a sugar and the nitrogen base is called as a nucleoside. There are five types of different nitrogenous bases, but only four of them are found in DNA. Guanine and adenine are classified as purines, which are double ring structures. Cytosine and thymine are classified as pyrimidines, which are single ring structures. Uracil is not found on DNA, but only found in an RNA. The nucleoside composed of a sugar and a nitrogenous base will be converted into a nucleotide by the addition of a phosphate to the 5' prime carbon of the sugar. Up to three individual phosphates can be attached in a series. The individual phosphate groups are designated as alpha, beta, and gamma, with the alpha phosphate being the one attached directly to the sugar. The full names of the four different nucleotides that polymerize to form DNA are 2 prime deoxy adenosine 5 prime triphosphate, 2 prime deoxy guanosine 5 prime triphosphate, 2 prime deoxy cytidine 5 prime triphosphate, and 2 prime deoxy thymidine 5 prime triphosphate. Normally, however, we abbreviate these into DATP, DGDP, DCTP, and D. TTP, or even just to A, G, T, 
and C, especially when writing out the sequence of nucleotides found in a particular DNA molecule. The next stage in building up the structure of a DNA molecule is to link the individual nucleotides together to form a polymer. This polymer is called a polynucleotide. This is formed by attaching one nucleotide to another nucleotide through the phosphate groups. The linkage between the nucleotides in a polynucleotide is called a phosphodiester bond. One nucleotide is attached to another nucleotide through the phosphate group. The bond is called a phosphodiester bond. Once multiple nucleotides are linked, this is now what we call as the polynucleotide. An important feature of the polynucleotide is that the two ends of the molecule are not the same. The top of this polynucleotide ends with a triphosphate group attached to the 5' prime carbon. This has not yet participated in the phosphodiester bond. This end is called as the 5' prime terminus or the 5' prime P terminus. On the other end of the molecule, the unreacted group is not a phosphate group but the 3' prime hydroxyl. This end is called as the 3' prime terminus or the 3' prime hydroxyl terminus. The chemical distinction between the two ends means that the polynucleotides have a direction. In this picture, this is a 5' prime to 3' prime direction going down. This one is a 3' prime to 5' prime direction going up. The backbone of the DNA is made up of sugar and phosphate. Here is the sugar and here is the phosphate. This sugar phosphate backbone forms the structural framework of nucleic acids. This backbone is composed of alternating sugar and phosphate groups and defines the directionality of the molecule. The sugar is at the 3' prime end and the phosphate is at the 5' prime end. In double-stranded DNA, the molecular double helix shape is formed by two linear sugar phosphate backbones that run in opposite uh, directions and they twist each other to form the helical shape. In living cells, DNA molecules almost always contain two polynucleotides, as explained previously, which are wrapped around one another to form the famous double helix structure, which was discovered by James Watson and Francis Crick in 1953. The two polynucleotides are anti-parallel with each other. This means that they run in different directions. One oriented from the 5' prime direction go into the 3' prime direction and the other from the 3' prime to the 5' prime direction. The polynucleotides must be anti-parallel in order to form a stable helix. Within the helix, an adenine is always adjacent to a thymine and similarly, Guanine is always adjacent to cytosine on the other strand. This is called as the base pairing. This involves the formation of hydrogen bonds in between adenine and thymine and cytosine and guanine. Hydrogen bond is a weak electrostatic attraction. The base pairing between adenine and thymine involves two hydrogen bonds. Guanine and cytosine involves three hydrogen bonds. Because of the base pairing, the sequences of the two nucleotides or polynucleotides in the helix are complementary. The sequence of one polynucleotide will determine the sequence of the other polynucleotide. There are three forms of DNA, the A form, B form, and the Z form, and among the three, the B form is the most common. The B form of DNA has 10 base pairs, abbreviated as 10BP, with a 0.34 nanometer B 
between adjacent base pairs and hence a pitch or a distance to complete a turn of 3.4 nanometers. The diameter of the helix is 2.37. The second type of DNA is the A form. This is more compact compared to the B form with 11 base pairs per turn. 0.29 nanometers between each two base pairs and a diameter of 2.55. Both A form and B form has different types of grooves. We have the minor groove and the major groove. For the A form, it has a narrower and a deeper major groove, while the minor groove is shallower and broader. A third type of DNA, which is the Z form, is more strikingly different. In this structure, the helix is left-handed and not right-handed. The sugar phosphate backbone adopts the irregular zigzag conformation. Z DNA is more tightly wound with 12 base pairs per turn and a diameter of only 1.84. The DNA as a genetic material is able to act as a store of biological information because there are four different nucleotides. The order of these nucleotides in a DNA molecule is called as the DNA sequence. In essence, this is like the language that is made up of four letters, A, C, G, and T. The biological information contained in genes is written in this language, which we all call as the genetic code. The language is read through the process called gene expression. Now that we know more about DNA, it is now time to proceed with the replication process. In order to act as units of inheritance, DNA should be able to replicate. Copies of the parent's genes must be placed in a fertilized egg cell so that this cell will receive the information it needs to develop into a new living organism and to display a mixture of biological characteristics from its parents. Genes must also be able to replicate every time a cell divides so that each of the two daughter cells can be given a complete copy of the biological information possessed by the parent cell. Replication should happen before cell division. DNA replication is important because cells divide every time. Cells divide constantly. DNA replication and cell division might be happening as we speak. So what is DNA replication? DNA replication is the process of making more DNA. This is a biological process of producing two identical replicas. Each resulting cell can keep a copy of all the chromosomes. This is an accurate process that is able to copy 0.5 billion base pairs of nucleotides in 50 base pairs per second. DNA replication starts at the part called the origin, which is identified by certain DNA sequences. In eukaryotes, DNA replication occurs in the nucleus. There are four enzymes that are important for the DNA replication process. First one is the helicase, which unwinds and separates the DNA strands. The second one is primase, which is responsible for annealing the RNA primer. The third one is DNA polymerase that replicates the DNA molecules. And the last one is ligase, which connects the DNA strands. Let's take a look at them closely. The first enzyme, which is the helicase, unwinds and separates the strands by breaking the hydrogen bonds that hold the DNA base together. This creates the replication fork, exposing the sequences of DNA base pairs where the succeeding enzymes will act. Other components that help in this process are the SSB proteins or the single-stranded binding proteins. The SSB bind to the DNA strand to keep them separated. They stabilize the strands and prevents them from annealing 
or from winding back together. Another enzyme that helps in this process is the topoisomerase. The topoisomerase relieves the stress generated by the unwinding of the DNA. The purpose of this is to keep the DNA from supercoiling or from overwinding. The second enzyme is the primase. Primase is also known as the initializer because it is in charge of initializing or it is needed for the next step of DNA replication to happen. The primase is in charge of creating a primer which is made up of RNA, also known as the RNA primer. This RNA primer is made up of 5 to 10 nucleotides which are complementary to the template DNA. The RNA primase is also in charge of annealing this RNA primer or connecting them to the DNA template. The third enzyme in the DNA replication is the DNA polymerase. This is known as the builder since it builds or it replicates DNA molecules to build new strands of DNA. It performs this by adding deoxyribonucleases A, C, G, or T. One problem of the DNA polymerase is that it does not know where to start, so it needs the primer. It can only start working once the primer is attached. Another concern of the DNA polymerase is that it can only build from the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. It cannot build from 3' prime to 5'. Prime. Shown in the picture, the DNA polymerase will build nucleotides from the 5' prime going to the 3' prime direction. That means that it can only attach to the 3' prime end of the DNA template. Two kinds of strands are formed in this process. We have the leading strand and the lagging strand. The leading strand, which is the 3' prime to the 5' prime DNA template, is known as the continuous process. Since the DNA polymerase can build from the 5' prime to 3' prime direction and attaches to the 3' prime end, as the DNA unwinds, it can continue building until it stops. The other strand is the lagging strand, which is the 5' prime to 3' prime DNA template. Once the 3' prime end is available and is initialized by the primer, the DNA polymerase will start building in the opposite direction, 5' prime to 3' prime, and stops when it reaches the start of the replication fork. That means another primer should be placed at the 3' prime end so that the DNA polymerase can build from the 5' prime to the 3' prime direction and the process is repeated. This makes it a very tedious and repeated process. The primers are always placed for DNA polymerase to build. This also creates fragments called the Okazaki fragments, which are made up of 100 to 200 base pairs. The Okazaki fragments always have a RNA primer. That's why the DNA polymerase 1 would have to replace these primers into a DNA molecule. The last enzyme is the ligase. This would seal the gaps found in the lagging strand in between the Okazaki fragments. When the gaps have been filled up, then that would create one continuous DNA strand. Replication of DNA is described to be semi-constructive. This means that two copies each would have the original copy or the template copy and a new strand. This strand is the one created by the DNA polymerase. And that ends this video, which talks about the DNA replication, which is in part of the process or the principle in the central dogma used in molecular biology. Thank you for watching.